Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. Over the last year, watercolors have become one of my favorite art mediums, and I somehow managed to become obsessed with making unique travel palettes out of all sorts of things. Today we'll be making a travel palette out of an eyeshadow set from the dollar store. And while you may not be able to find this exact eyeshadow set again, a lot of the techniques I use to customize it can be translated to other containers. There are also a couple of time-sensitive announcements in this video, so stay tuned! The first step to prepping any makeshift palette is to take out any existing product and clean up your surfaces. Don't forget to look for any hidden tape, glue dots, or stickers to remove. Personally, I save everything that I take out and find a way to reuse it, but don't feel guilty if you end up throwing away like 50 cents of makeup. After you're good and cleaned up, lay your palette out onto a piece of cheap but sturdy watercolor paper and trace the whole thing. This will become our mixing palette as well as our reference swatches, so fold it in half after you cut it. I like to sort of roughly draw the shape and location of where my paints will go, as well as label each dot with any information I may need. For small ones like this, I often just go simple and only write down the name, which I do in the top half of the paper. Next step is decoration, and you can do this however you'd like, but my favorite method is just taking washi tape and wrapping it around the edges to help it stay, and maybe gluing some decorations on or drawing on top of the tape. This tape really resisted my pen, but it was fun to doodle on anyway. After you've decided on the order that you want your paints in the palette, line them up and fill your sections. If any of the paints come out a little separated, just mix them with a palette knife or toothpick or something. They'll be fine in the end. I let my paints dry overnight before swatching them on the reference card we made earlier, but you can also do it while they're still fresh if you'd like. Also, you may have noticed that I put some little hearts in the section that eventually represented where the white would go. This was so the white's full opacity could be determined, in case I wanted to use white for stars or details or something. You know that old adage of measure twice, cut once? At this point, double, triple, even quadruple check that your card will fit properly inside of your palette, even while folded. It's also a good idea to make sure that it's smaller than you expect to need, because the next step will inherently make it larger. In order to create a waterproof surface for us to mix on, and so that the swatches stay protected, we're going to laminate our card. I don't have a laminator, so I just use packing tape, which can also be obtained at the dollar store. Personally, I prefer to lay down overlapping strips of tape before placing my card inside, and then covering with a second layer. There's no real benefit to this method, it's just how I happen to do it. The important part is afterwards to seal your lamination by putting pressure on it with either a bone folder or with a metal spoon. I usually have both at my desk and kind of just grab whatever's available, but the bone folder is absolutely more efficient at really pressing down the edge around your card and helping to seal it in. It also tends to push out more bubbles and uneven spots in your tape, but a spoon will still do in a pinch. Afterwards, trim off any excess tape, use your bone folder to trace over the crease in the middle that we made earlier, and fold your paper in half once again. Check that it still fits in your palette, adjust as needed, and then use hot glue to attach it, making sure that your swatches are on the top half and facing you, and the bottom half is blank. Hot glue is one of my top tips when making palettes because it's essentially just melted plastic, which means that it's waterproof and cleans up well. So I use it to make separated mixing wells in my palettes. That, combined with the plastic packing tape, it's super inexpensive and really effective as a mixing surface.
while you watch me show off the portability and usability of this palette, I want to announce two things. First of all, we hit 500 followers on Instagram during Inktober, and I am so overwhelmingly grateful for all of your support. Obviously, this means it's time for giveaway. What you haven't seen up until now is that I actually made two identical mini palettes, and I'm giving one away. Check the doobly-doo down below for instructions on how to enter the giveaway. Secondly, November 10th is my 30th birthday, so from November 9th, 10th, and 11th of 2017, I have a coupon for a whopping 30% off in my Etsy store. That information will also be in the doobly-doo, as well as mentioned on my Instagram and Facebook. Thank you all so much for hanging out. You really know how to make a gal feel loved. If you liked seeing how this mini palette was made and want to see how I've made others, or even get a tour of my probably dozen or so kits, drop me a comment. I already plan on showing how I set up larger studio palettes, which I use very different techniques for. And remember, if you want to welcome our robot overlords, please like and subscribe. Until I see you again, I wish you peace, love, and a pleasant absorption into the overlord mainframe. <laughs>